All right. So I am excited to introduce you to Zero Waste Miami, an exciting coalition in Miami-Dade County that is working to build our local zero waste economy by catalyzing local zero waste projects. So I'll jump right in. And just a brief outline. Uh, we'll start with going through the Zero Waste Miami status. And for those of you that are new to the coalition, just a background about what we've been doing. And then we're excitingly going to go through some new activities that were funded by a recent NOAA Sea Grant funding opportunity that we were just awarded. We'll go through the timeline of those activities, what we need from you, our Zero Waste Miami community, and then some communication guidelines for when you are posting or sharing about participating in the Sea Grant funded activities specifically. And this is recorded at a later date. So our PI, Anna Zangroni, is not here, but she is our amazing co-PI for this project. And she is the Florida Sea Grant Extension Agent for Miami-Dade County. She's incredible. So we're very excited to be working with her on this project. And so for those of you that have already tuned into some of our meetings, you might have seen this slide before, but this is just to highlight the diverse membership that we have and are working to have for the Zero Waste Miami Coalition. And so this is a cross-sector coalition spanning nonprofits, businesses, government, academia, and schools, and the public. And within those sectors, hitting on a bunch of additional um, subcategories as well, because you know zero waste really touches pretty much every facet of society. And so with the nonprofits, it involves the cleanup community, environmental justice, climate action, food waste nonprofits. In terms of businesses, it's the zero waste service providers and the folks that would wanna use them, businesses, chambers, hotel associations, events and venues. In terms of government, we want to involve our lawmakers and their aides and offices, but then also our regulatory depart departments, government services and agencies. In terms of academic partners, we have worked with and are recruiting more high schools, colleges, K through 12 schools. The PTAs are an amazing, passionate resource. And then as well, we have our amazing public that we need buy-in from for these initiatives to really be successful and scale across community groups, churches, the news and media, and just our, our consumer body. And so this was created by our amazing program manager, Amanda. Also, I don't know if I mentioned who is speaking, who I am. I'm our program director, Maddie. Uh, but Amanda made this great visual that kind of shows the Zero Waste Miami membership right now to scale based on the density of representation within these groups. And we excitingly already have 90 plus members um, from over 70 organizations. And I will say this is an informal membership right now because thanks to these Sea Grant funds, we will be creating our Zero Waste Miami handbook together, which I'll go into in a moment. But right now, these are individuals that have joined our communication channels, our meetings and events, but this will be formalized in the near future. And so, you might have seen this slide before if you've tuned in, but just kind of broadly, what the goal of this coalition is, is to, on theme, establish this kind of circular connection structure. And so we really want to connect these individuals and entities and schools and community groups and businesses that are interested in implementing circular economy initiatives at their establishments with the providers that exist in Miami that can help them achieve their circular economy goals and potentially with people servicing other parts of the U.S. that might want to consider Miami as a new market. And then we want to connect these individuals and groups with the government, the relevant government representatives and agencies to go through, you know, what are the potential barriers to these projects? How can we you know, work around permitting to make sure that these projects can be implemented and last and what kind of government incentives can we tap into to make these projects more feasible 
And then we want to connect this with our public and nonprofits to raise awareness and participate in these zero waste projects to build support and vote with their dollars. And again, make it circular so that once there's more public support, this will feed into more entities wanting to implement circular economy initiatives. And so the loop can continue. And so these are kind of the basic activities of the Zero Waste Miami Coalition. We currently have our communication channel. So we meet regularly once a month. This has been on Zoom. In the past, we recently started doing hybrid meetings to get together in person. We also have a WhatsApp chat and a mailing list where you can post resources, opportunities, request information, request partners for any zero waste project. And we have a resource database that also consists of funding opportunities, resources, circular economy service providers that you can review and tap into for projects you're working on. And so this is currently in process. This is happening. We'd love to have you join if you're not a part of this already. And then thanks to the Sea Grant funding, we'll be hosting formal framework building events this fall. And so that is where we will meet to really finalize what is our shared vision? What is our shared mission? What is our decision-making structure, um, governance structure, all the, the nitty gritty important stuff that we're super excited to have funding to really flesh out. We'll go into this a little bit more in the next slides. Then we're gonna host a four part workshop series where we will develop a community driven ground up zero waste strategy consisting of local zero waste projects and plans to accompany these projects. And then this will also fund ongoing research. So thanks to these funds, our team will be able to continue looking into what's happening in other parts of the states and world that we can bring here. What are groups in Miami maybe working on these fronts that we might not be aware of? Just doing local and external research on zero waste strategies to inform our work here. And then this isn't funded, but we're hoping that this will lead to pilot programs of zero waste projects that people can implement. And while this isn't funded by Sea Grant, if anyone in this coalition has the opportunity to work on a pilot project, we are so for it, we will support it. Um, but ideally we have these project plans from our strategy that we can use to begin implementing pilots after the Sea Grant project. So I want to zoom in a little bit more on the specific activities funded by the Sea Grant opportunity. And so the first two things will be those framework building events. So this is when we will all get together in a hybrid format to co-create our Zero Waste Miami handbook. This will include information about our membership strategy. Are we inclusive where anyone can join or are we exclusive and strategic about our membership? What is our membership criteria? What do we kind of sign on in agreement of our, our shared vision for a zero waste future and just all agree upon? What is our decision-making structure? Will it be equitable or will it be consensus where we need 100% of folks in agreement? I'm leaning towards equitable because consensus sounds very challenging, but that's for us to decide together during these events. And then any other bylaws and rules and fundraising, all that good stuff will be fleshed out this fall. And I also wanted to add, actually, before I move forward, this will, again, result in that Zero Waste Miami handbook. We will have a draft version that we will circulate to the coalition for review and feedback. And then that will hopefully be finalized by early 2025. So then I want to zoom into our workshops, this four-part workshop series, starting with the first. So these, this first workshop will be targeted towards the zero waste service providers. So any company or business that provides zero waste services to help our local entities build their circular economy strategies. So that can be reuse and refill providers, composting programs, repair and restoration entities, consultants, food rescue services, all that good stuff. And one of the main goals of this workshop will be to create these service provider profiles. 
And so that will consist of key elements that we should be aware of that define, you know, what these providers provide. And so that will be the geographic location of their operations and the geographic scope, the size and scale of the services they provide, the cost, the logistical and infrastructural requirements of their operations, the expected outcomes that they promise to the individuals and groups that they work with. If they are a service provider that's maybe outside of Miami, what are their requirements to enter the Miami market? And then the next kind of main goal is to identify these kind of key aspects associated with these providers. Um, a few being what are the key challenges that they've faced that we should be aware of and figure out how to address those challenges? What are the key opportunities they've had in the past and how can we create those in Miami? What are the essentials for success that we need to make sure are available to them here? And then very importantly is discussing equity strategies because zero waste when done wrong can be a very exclusive and inaccessible uh, matter. And we wanna make sure that these projects and initiatives that result from this grant are accessible and equitable throughout Miami-Dade County. So then our next workshop be, will be for zero waste service users. So anyone that wants to use the services provided by the providers. And so that can be many, many entities. These are just a few restaurants, corporations, hotels, offices, venues, events, schools, nonprofits, convention centers, the whole nine yards. And at the beginning of this workshop, we're gonna present out the service provider profiles from workshop one so that the users can learn what is potentially and what is already available to them. And then similarly to workshop one, we're gonna make profiles, but again, but this time for the service users. And they will be very similar to the provider profiles because as you'll see in the next slide, that is done strategically. Uh, but Similar, similarly, our first goal will, to, will be to build these profiles. So what is the geographic location and scope of these users? What's the scale of their operations? What's their budget for the initiatives that they're interested in? What are the logistical and infrastructural requirements for their operations? And what are the outcomes the users want to see by partnering with these providers? And then again, we will also, for our second goal, work to identify these key aspects of challenges they've faced trying to implement projects in the past, essentials for success, and again, equity strategies to make sure projects are accessible. So then workshop three is gonna be where we bring in government and we're also considering bringing in some financial investor partners at this point or potentially in workshop four, which we'll go into in the next slide. But with government, we really want to loop in our lawmaker offices, sustainability departments at local governments, the relevant regulatory agencies, and other relevant departments such as tourism, culture, and hospitality. And before this workshop, we're going to use the outcomes of workshops one and two to match zero waste service providers with zero waste service users based off of the profiles we developed in workshop one and two. And those matches will be presented out as kind of these potential projects. And we're gonna present these matches to our local government and work to identify some key opportunities for government to support them. And that would be in the form of incentives government can provide, whether that's grant opportunities and tax incentives, but then we'll also discuss, you know, what regulations exist that can make these projects difficult to implement and how do we address those? Uh, for example, we're very interested in creating washing hubs down here in South Florida so that we can scale reuse, but we will need to work with Durham to see what needs to be done related to fog permits or fats, oils, and greases permits associated with uh, businesses that have washing operations. And then finally, excitingly, our final workshop will involve all attendees from our previous three. So the service users, the service providers, and the government representatives. And prior to this workshop, we're going to circulate 
a document that has these potential zero waste projects. And those projects will kind of consist of those user provider matches along with notes about the government resources and hindrances associated with those projects. And the coalition is going to score based off of a matrix we develop is going to score these projects based on, you know, how much of a low hanging fruit are they? What's the potential for impact um, to be developed? And based off of those scores, we're gonna have a hierarchy of projects. And so they'll receive a form of ranking where we have our highest priority projects and kind of based on the complexity of those projects will determine our final number. We're gonna have these top priority projects in mind prior to workshop four. And then we're going to get everyone together to come up with strategies and action plans for those specific projects, connecting the users involved with the providers involved and the government entities that they will need to work with for these projects to grow. And as I mentioned, we'll be making action plans. So these are just a few components on this slide of what we will work to flesh out, but we'll figure out what are the stakeholders to be involved and how will we engage partners and the public how will we do a baseline assessment and waste audit so that we can measure the impact of this project and associated with that, how will we measure the impact of this project? What are the metrics and monitoring techniques? What are the key personnel to be involved? Do they need to go through a training? Again, that equity strategy, and then flesh out a rough timeline that these projects can follow in key next steps. So this is the anticipated timeline. Uh, the Sea Grant funds are supposed to come in in September of 2024, but they might be a little delayed. Fingers crossed, we'll keep everyone posted. Things might be shifted back just slightly, but here's our anticipated timeline where our first two framework building events will take place this fall. From those events, we will compile our Zero Waste Miami handbook and that will involve circulating it to the coalition for review and then finalization. And then in the spring to summer of next year, we will start our workshop series with our first workshop taking place in the spring, our second workshop taking place in the summer, early fall, our third workshop taking place in the fall and winter, early winter of 2025. And then our last workshop will take place in early 2026. After those workshops, we will compile our zero waste strategy. We will circulate it to the coalition and the community for review and feedback in the spring and summer. And then in the summer and fall, we will disseminate that zero waste strategy to the community, get it in front of our lawmakers, of investors, of anyone that our coalition thinks needs to see these materials so that they can help support the projects actually being implemented. And then we'll also host a celebratory closing event. So as you will see, we did not include the implementation of these projects in this funding, but just was not a large enough grant opportunity. And so we will always be looking out and we encourage you to help us look out for resources to get these projects off the ground once their action plans are developed. So just to highlight some key deliverables, we'll have that Zero Waste Miami handbook with our mission, vision, bylaws, decision-making structure, the whole nine yards. We will have our Zero Waste strategy with those action plans for high priority projects. I also wanted to highlight that when permission is given, we will also publish our Zero Waste service provider and user profiles because not everyone might be featured as the highest priority projects for that strategy. We do wanna make sure those profiles are still publicly available so that the community knows about the providers and the providers know about their potential users and can still reach out to partner and initiate projects even if they're not featured in our final strategy document. We will also have a robust Zero Waste Miami resource database. I've been working to keep that document growing and alive with some of the startup funds that's, that has supported Zero Waste Miami thus far, but we're really excited to have the Sea Grant funds continue to support that so I can do more digging to find more funding opportunities, more resource opportunities, and more circular economy service providers for you all to use. 
So almost done. What we need from you. Would love for you to stay engaged in our community coalition channels. Join our monthly Zoom so you can meet local zero waste champions. Continue to use the WhatsApp to share resources and find out information that you need. Um, definitely keep those alive. They've been super successful so far. We would love your help in continuing to recruit new members to Zero Waste Miami, specifically outside of the sustainability and environmental circles. We absolutely love the community we have so far, but definitely want to diversify and know that it's possible because Zero Waste does touch all parts of a community and a society. Um, if possible, we would absolutely love your participation in our framework building events and workshops. And we did build in some needs-based stipends for event attendance. So if you have to take off work, you can definitely get a stipend to attend and we'll create some form of application or uh, verification system for that. And then if you can review our Zero Waste Miami document, so both the handbook and the strategy document when those are eventually ready, we would truly love your feedback and expertise and we'll likely circulate a survey for you to provide feedback and help us and help answer questions that we'd specifically like your feedback on. And then eventually, once all is said and done in about two years, we would love your help in disseminating the zero waste strategy and helping us find ways to get those projects off the ground, whether that's through government opportunities, investors, all that good stuff. Um, yes. This is what we ideally need from you. So some quick notes on communication guidelines. So this project is funded by NOAA Sea Grants Marine Debris Community Actions Coalitions Competition. So this is NOAA Sea Grant. And uh, just to note that NOAA Sea Grant is not a part of the NOAA Marine Debris Program, although they do work together sometimes. But if you're shouting out who funded this work, definitely shout out Sea Grant, not the Marine Debris Program. And just to reiterate what Sea Grant is specifically funding, that is the framework building events and the development of the handbook and strategy workshops and the development of the zero waste strategy. Um, if the coalition is doing other activities, those are not necessarily funded by Sea Grant. So don't shout out Sea Grant for those. These uh, this opportunity is funded by the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and the Inflation Reduction Act, which is pretty cool. So feel free to give that a shout out. And you cannot use the Sea Grant logo or NOAA emblem without approval by their office. I don't think anyone here would. But if you do, if you are interested, you'll need to reach out to me and I can reach out to our contacts at the National Sea Grant and NOAA offices. Here are the handles for the various partners of the Sea Grant funds. We got Debris Free Oceans, our Miami Dade Sea Grant, our National Sea Grant, and the NOAA handles for Instagram and Twitter here. And I'll just pause in case anyone's screenshotting this. And then finally, just wanted to end with a quick note on incineration, as many of you know. There is a um, there's a lot going on in Miami as they work to potentially find a location and rebuild a incinerator for Miami-Dade County after the one in Doral burnt down over a year ago to the point of not functioning. And we just wanna highlight that this group is not focused on anti-incineration because there's already great work being done locally on that front by our friends at Florida Rising and Sierra Club. So if you want to get involved with that, this is a QR code to Sierra Club's anti-incineration mobilization WhatsApp chat. And if you want to be connected with Florida Rising, please reach out to me. Um, we want to keep this group focused on creating alternative solutions to prevent the need for waste management. We do acknowledge that these solutions that we generate will be severely disincentivized if an incinerator is built. Um, but that is really being spearheaded by the experts at Sierra Club and Florida Rising. So we direct you all to them and you will see us there as well. And I believe that is it. So I'm gonna stop this recording before any discussion in Q and A. But thank you so much for your interest in Zero Waste Miami. 
And my email address is not on the slide, my apologies, but if you want to reach out, you can contact me at Maddie, M-A-D-D-I-E at debriefreeoceans.org. Thank you.